Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Blaze Factorio Space Exploration for part two of this week's video uh, where I'm going to go through some of the other little bits and pieces we fixed around mostly around the space station in the last stream. And I'm going to start off by talking about the um, the Astro Science Thermofluid. So this is the area, this is the Astro, Astro Science area where all the catalogues are being made over here. And this had ground to a halt rather unfortunately. And, and as I said in last week's video, it was down to a, a, a problem with the thermofluid. So there was there was sufficient thermofluid here, but the problem was we had too much of the uh, of the uh, the warm thermofluid in here, and that meant that the uh, the, the hypercoolers down here that are chilling the cool thermofluid down to cold and super chilled weren't able to push back the return um, warm thermofluid to go back into the into the system over in, into this tank over here and allow it to get past through to go round again and again. Uh, and so, in order to get round that problem, I've put in a couple of extra tanks up here that are providing me an extra 100,000 buffer. So there's now 50% more than there was before. And you can see, looking at these, um, we've still got 100, about 150 in there, 180... 210 or 220 or so um, thermofluids, that's, that's quite a lot. And so um, we've still got more of it than we really want to have up here. And after thinking about it a little bit, I worked out the problem had happened. I, th I believe because the, the uh, all of the facilities down here had been running a bit too much, and so they'd managed to drain all of the cold and the super chilled out of these two tanks down here, which meant there was an extra 50 thermofluid bubbling around in the system. And that had all been warmed up by the computers and turned back into, into warm thermofluid. So there was an extra 50,000 up here that we then, uh, that had then caused, and that was what caused it to be sort of pushed over the edge, which is why these tanks up here should have, should have helped there. And so we've now got um, the machines running again. I've upgraded all of them to a tier three speed modules, as you, as you can see in, in at least some of the cases. And I've made a start on upgrading these radiators to the blue radiators, the thermal radiator 2s instead of the thermal radiator 1s. Now we don't actually have enough of those made yet, they're being gradually produced over time by the by the factory, but at the moment, but at least having uh, having some of them upgraded means they're, they're a bit faster. So as you can see this one runs at a speed of 3.4, this one runs at a speed of 10.2, so it's about three times fast, as, as fast. In fact it's exactly three times as fast, uh, so it's a much more powerful machine. If I can get through and if I can replace a lot of these radiators with the blue ones, then we'll be able to get through a lot, we'll be able to chill the uh, thermofluid down in much much larger quantities and that's relevant because this tank here now the cool thermofluid tank is the what is where the I'm not going to say it's where the problem is but it's where the symptom of the problem is and so we want to push 80,000 um, cold cool thermofluid through into this tank to give this to keep have a bit of a buffer in here to give all of these something to work with on when they're when they're chilling it down to the the, uh, the later levels of chill and also to take some of it out of these tanks up here to give us a bit more space and that's why I'm trying to upgrade all of these radiators along here because this seems to be the limiting factor at the moment despite the fact that we've got every everything running here as fast as it can and if you look along here you can see all of the green lights on all of the machines that tell you, tell you that they're running except not these ones are these are showing red um, because it seems that we aren't we aren't interesting so the problem here is that we're not able to pump the uh, the warm thermofluid out fast enough so we've got we've got a pump here running flat out I guess as fast as a pump can pump um, but this pipe is only at 75% full and then as we go further down the pipe it runs out and so some of these machines down towards the end here aren't able to chill any of the thermofluid down just because they can't pull enough through to, to get enough to, uh, to get any going and so I guess the answer to this is going to be to put another output pump on on here somewhere maybe on this connection going into the main tank here or maybe coming off this side tank up here and then run a really long pipe down here and then hook it in at some point now I, I could bring it in somewhere part way down with a uh, by removing one of the radiators and just coming in at the side or I could bring it all the way down to the end around and in here either way we then have um, twice as much being twice as much thermofluid being pushed into the pipes and therefore we'd be able to get these machines running a bit more a bit more solidly and if we're going to speed the speed them all up by a factor of three then we're definitely going to need that I think the reason this has suddenly become a problem and wasn't beforehand is because I put in these tier 3 speed modules. So these machines are running quite a lot faster than they used to. Even the orange ones are running quite a lot faster than they used to. And then as we upgrade them to tier 3s as well, then that's giving us another massive boost. So we've got much more capacity here for cooling the thermofluid, but we haven't got the capacity to get it into the system. I... I have a bit of a, a blind spot isn't quite the right word, but I tend to um, not really have a feel for how much liquid you can push through pipes and then just go, yeah, we'll put more machines running off that, it'll be fine, and then it isn't fine, and I come back and I have to uh, rebuild it and improve things. Now, having had another quick look over here, it occurs to me that I could take I could take this three pipe out here and put in a couple of pieces of single, and then I could have a pump in this space here, and that'd be pulling out of this this port on the tank. So that that'd be quite a nice way of getting some getting more liquid out into the uh, into the pipe here. And actually, that might be enough to get the system running a bit more quickly. Let's let's try this. So I put that there like that. And then I put another pump in here. I don't know, because I thought the pumps were faster than pipes, 
But this pump is going absolutely flat out, presumably, and yet this pipe is only 76% full. So if I put another pump in here to push more of the fluid through, then maybe we'll get a bit more in this pipe. Maybe we'll be able to keep it filled up a little bit more, a little bit more, and keep the system slightly more satisfied. Let's give that a shot and see what happens. Okay, the pump has now been delivered. It is running, and we've got, um, yeah, we've now got 90, we've now got 94% full in this pipe. Um, it doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to be dribbling down the pipe particularly effectively. So I think that's probably hasn't really worked. Hasn't really made much of a difference. However, this does mean that I could now potentially run another pipe from here, which is already coming out of this tank, without having to faff around with other tanks or with any anything else around here. Um, I and mean, there's there's lots of space around here with with all of these power connections that we don't really need. So I could remove some of those. And there's there's room to mess around up here. But if if we've already got the pipes coming out, then that that's that's sort of convenient. So having and, and now having a, a nice healthy supply of the um, of the super chilled and the uh, the cold thermofluid available means that now we've, we've we should in theory be able to kick everything back into production here. Um, I do notice though, that, however, that we seem to be still seem to be short of some of the. Um, oh no, we're not. We are well. We are a bit short. We're a bit short of these ones. What are you? You're tier ones. We seem to be very very short of tier ones. But two threes and fours. We do have at least some of them coming in at the moment. Uh, looking down here, I can see that there's there's a bit of a shortage of which ones are you of the tier twos along here. And I believe the reason we have these shortages is because of the researches we've been doing. Tristan's been running quite a lot of the uh, the deep space zone discoveries. And these are very, very unusual because they use more than one type of astro science. So a normal, a normal research like this one, the Aquium Accumulators, for example, uses tier four astro of, of astro energy and material, tier one of matter and tier one of deep space, fine. Um, this one, energy weapons, uses uh, tier four of energy and um, and so on. There are some of them that you will use different tiers of, of, of different science packs, but I believe the only one that uses multiple tiers of the same type of science pack is the Deep Space Zone Discovery. And because making a tier 2 astro science pack uses a tier 1 astro science pack, and making a tier 3 uses a tier 2, and making that tier 2 uses a tier 1, that means that if you start trying to do these science sciences, you're getting through, for every time it runs, you're actually getting through three uh, astro science 1s, two astro science 2s, and one astro science 3. So that puts a lot more demand, a lot more load on the system, especially on, on the tier 1 catalogues. And that's why we've managed to rip through an enormous number of them. Um, and they are, as you can see, they are being produced at the moment. And we're doing an energy weapon research project at the moment, so we don't need to worry too much about the Astro right now. Uh, so I think this is all going to be fine, but that system that that sort of factor with the with with it using so many for each research is why we've ripped through quite so many of the astro ones and why we seem to have a bit of a shortage um so the system is over here is, is as you can see it has plenty of um, inputs along here i'm very very tempted to just say let's let's put some modules into all of these things give them some speed modules so they'll run a bit faster yes we'll pull through a lot more of these data cards but i think that's probably fine we we seem to have i was going to say we have a decent amount of all of them that's not true these green ones along here the visible light uh, data don't seem to seem to be in a in slightly short uh, supply um and there's this quite there's some of them being passed through along here um we are basically we are make, we are getting through a lot of the uh, the the green the visible light ones. We get through quite a few of the uh, yellows and just generally we're getting through a lot of these these data cards. But um, but I think we've probably got enough different stages of buffering along here that this is going to be fine. And this is just going and, and this is probably unnecessary, but makes me feel a little bit better. And as a quick glance before we move on to other things, you can see over here that there are still quite a lot of radiators that have red lights on them because they don't have enough uh, 25 degree thermofluid, any enough of the warm thermofluid to run. So yes, this this fix over here has not worked. I'm going to need to pull a, pull a supply of thermofluid out from here, run it all the way down, and then either put it in halfway along to feed the second half of the machines, or probably more e probably easier, just run it all the way along and then loop it in down here into the pipe at the other end. And then we've got two return pipes. There's one at the top and one at the bottom. So I don't think we're going to have the same problem with those. Those all seem to be only be only be about half full. So I think that that, that makes sense. Tristan has done some fiddling over in Agnorbit where we have this this spaceship and this is the one that we were talking about last week that was departing when it shouldn't do and so he's put in an extra condition on the spaceship to say if there is a spaceship and he's done that by looking to looking for the speed signal which is being sent out if there if the speed signal is greater than zero then output an additional tick and the theory is that when the spaceship goes away that will go to not sending a green tick. And so the theory is here, in the clock tick where it arrives, there will be no green tick coming from here because there wasn't a spaceship at the beginning of that tick. And so even though all the other signals say, yes, it's fine for the ship to depart, that one won't yet. And then by the second clock tick, 
This one will be outputting its green tick, but at that point will have got rid of at least one of the uh, the green ticks from over here, where which saying that hey something is the, the system isn't running, we don't need to do anything. And so hopefully that's going to give us that extra tiny little bit of delay on landing that's going to prevent the ship from taking off when it shouldn't. Also, that was a really hard one to explain because I had to. I was talking about both clock ticks and green ticks. Um, yeah, a tick, a, using a tick for this was not the best choice. <laughs> Back over in Norbit, Tristan has increased the production of utility science, and that was down to the uh, machine learning data. These ones are coming in here. They were not being made fast enough. So in order to get the uh, the utility science able to produce more quickly, he's in he's improved things along here. I'm not sure whether he's put in speed modules or whether he's put in extra computers. It, to be honest, it could be it could easily be either of those. But whatever it is he's done, it seems that we do now have sufficient of the uh, machine learning data coming through, and we now have a steady stream of utility science coming out. And I wonder how far that's backed up along the belt. Not very. So it looks like we were very, very short of that until he came along and, and fixed it. Uh, yeah, you can see up here, we are still loading it into this into this warehouse over here where we have a whole 75 of it out of the, I think, a thousand that we tried to keep buffered in here. So there's quite, yes, there's quite a lot of, um, quite a lot more needed to be fed through here before we're, before we're happy and satisfied there. But we're heading in the right direction and the train isn't here trying to take it away. So I think that's probably going to be okay. I noticed that the space science seems to be in a similar position as well. Uh, I think he, I think he might he, maybe he's done some upgrades over here. It did look like there were quite a lot of machines with quite a lot of yeah quite, quite a lot of machines with quite a lot of speed modules in them, uh, but it's kind of hard to tell. He hasn't mentioned uh, fiddling with those. However, he has said that he's boosted rocket science production, so that's these gold cards down here. And I think that's probably been done by by trying to bring down some more of the 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 um, this, these data things, the satellite telemetry or um, little orange microwave things, and feed, feed, feeding those in over here. That um, so that's now. Now seems to seems to be working. We have a nice healthy backlog on the belt over here. And on a similar note, I, I did fairly similar, sort of similar things with a couple of the other sciences over here. So I've dropped in a uh, a, be a wide area beacon here that's getting both the uh, the military data, the grey science cards, and also the blue ones, the probably chemical data, I guess. Uh, those haven't really caught up yet. There's still uh, quite a large gap on the on the on the belt over here. And also, I did the same thing for I think it was yes, the green ones over here because we've run out of those. As you can see, they're they're still struggling as well. Although actually, they're struggling at least partly because we don't seem to have enough of the blank. Um, tech cards coming through so we might need to look into making that run even faster and we've already put in the um, already put in a beacon over here so these are being made at a phenomenal rate but we need a faster belt to pull them through by the looks of it that seems to be the problem and, and quite a lot of them are being taken away this way so yes doing some upgrades on these on this belt I think would would help a bit let's let's try that so if I upgrade all of that and I'll get the inserters as well because I think they could they could run faster and that that underground there and that one and that, and then all the way along to here as well. I think if that maybe that'll be enough. Although this this one for the red seems to be stopped, so maybe I do need to upgrade a little bit further through from here. Let's bring it at least all the way along to the greens here, and hopefully that'll make that run a little bit quicker. Uh, so you can see, yes, there's a, there is a supply of greens, a supply of blues flowing through here. It's not as quick as I would like. And if I pa pa pan all the way over here to have a look at where we're loading up the, uh, the, the the train that's to go up to orbit, you can see that, okay, the reds and the greens are okay along here. We seem to be very, very short of blues. They're being fed through as soon as they arrive. We have absolutely no heavy assemblies. Well, that's that's separate. That's a different, a different thing. Um, but okay, we could do with some more heavy assemblies being made. And we're also very, very short of military tech cards. So I think those are both going to need to be looked into. Uh, Oh, and um, and iridium beams as well. Okay, that that seems to be all the things we have a shortage of at the moment, at least go, for going up going up through here. So yeah, we need to get those those blue cards, data cards being produced as much more quickly as we can. We need to um, and and the the grey ones as well. And you know, it would be quite nice to get the heavy assemblies and the iridium beams running as well. Those were fairly easy up to upgrades and, and improvements, but as you can see, there's still quite a little bit quite a bit of work needed on those. It despite the increase in the improvements there, I think we're going to need to start making the blank tech cards a lot more quickly because that does seem to be the bottleneck at the moment. Speaking of bottlenecks, we had a hell of a problem up here in Norbit with the scrap processing, and this was largely down to the um, the new matter science production down here. We have the system down here. It is now currently kind of mostly working, although it seems to be running a little bit slow, slower than I would like. Um, we have we have the system that's mostly working, but this this kicks out quite a lot of uh, contaminated scrap, especially this step and it looks like this step, and so this. These, this was producing so much of it that it was jamming up the belt that takes away the scrap from the rest of energy processing, which was the first problem. And then at the top here, 
it was causing a, it was clogging up up here as well because we didn't have enough throughput on the belt here to take away the, the scrap from from the matter processing and all and deal with all the scrap that was coming in from elsewhere and you can see there's still quite a lot of stuff flowing in here there's a huge quantity of junk data cards that i suspect have come from one of the other science production systems and it's it, only just it's still being cleaned out we've got scrap coming along the middle belt here and that means that the uh, the material science is running which is also a, a massive producer of scrap and so um in order to in order to help with this i did i did a number of things and we'll, we'll run through these from sort of from the source end first. The first one was to split the belt here and originally I had one belt going up this way that was taking away all the scrap from matter processing and then this one and then the, this one here that was taking away all the scrap from energy science but then I decided it made more sense to bring out to split out the uh, contaminated scrap here and send the clean scrap and junk data cards and so on up this belt. I'm not 100% sure why I did that in hindsight. Um, I don't think it's really going to make a great deal of difference. If anything it's possibly going to be slightly worse but never mind. Then at the top of here, these two belts join up again and all of the contaminated scrap is taken off to the left onto what is a now a brand new belt. So we have a fourth belt going along here to give us a bit more uh, space. And the miscellaneous stuff, of which there is significantly less as you can as you can see, is then sent out and joined onto this belt here. Where, and there's, there is currently at least plenty of room on here. So we've got an extra belt coming around here and we've got a bit more and, and room for, for the extra throughput on here. So this, this is now working quite nicely. This part I didn't touch because uh, it's... <sighs> It's a mess, but it kind of works. Then the next thing was that down here, where we're feeding the scrap into the into the scrap processing, we had a two two single uh, what single square chests in here that were getting fed by various inputs, and it was and there were lots of belts being merged, like like we've got here. There, so these these two are being merged here, but it doesn't matter too much because this, these are, they're both fairly low throughput. But previously we had some being merged that were very high throughput, and it just wasn't working. And so I put in a storehouse here, and this means we can have three belts going into the top of it and two in that side. So we've got five five belts pouring in and another five belts pouring it out as well and that means we can then get a lot more throughput we've got four solid belts going down into the uh, into the processing machines down here and a fifth one that goes into the in, into the storage here for to be taken away to be turned into matter science so we've got loads and loads of scrap processing this is now working much more smoothly and efficiently because we don't have uh, splitters trying to merge two fairly full belts into a single belt and causing massive back bottlenecks and uh, tailbacks there this means that we can now pump so much more scrap through here. We can get solid, but uh, and so we're having the solid belts coming out on all, all, all four of these means we are now dealing with the scrap fast enough once again, which I feel is quite an achievement given the stage of the game we're at. <laughs> Uh, we now also have an exclusive belt for the, it seems we have an exclusive belt for the contaminated scrap, although any contaminated scrap that's coming, coming gets through here will still be passed through and, and sorted by all the all the splitters along here. So down here we could end up with some contaminated scrap on here, it's just this is all the one, all the stuff that's coming from the, uh, the matter processing, which seems to be the only place that's produ producing contaminated at the moment. That then can all flow down here. This this additional belt now runs all the way down here to the uh, to the um, contaminated scrap processing, and down here, yeah, as you can see, we're feeding in any that comes down the, the main section. We split off here, pass through these splitters, and then put onto this belt over here, where we can where we can, as you can see, we are currently dealing with it quickly enough. We weren't, however, dealing with it quickly enough before, so we're now able to offload some ex any extra scrap that comes contaminated scrap that comes down the outside. That can be passed round along here and passed through into this area to be de dealt with by these machines. All of these upgrades, I have to say, were a team effort between myself and Tristan, and we had a few instances of us both working on a thing at the same time and really confusing each other. Um, <laughs> but most of the contaminated scrap down here was him, and most of the clean scrap up there was was, was my work, I think. Although we we worked together on the whole lot, so I wouldn't like to say I wouldn't like to say uh, specifically e either way. One other thing I think is quite interesting to note is the sheer quantity of these uh, blank data cards that are coming through here, ready to be uh, passed into the in, back into the uh, system down here to be taken away by trains and reused. And that is that is fantastic. That's immense. So we, you can see how just how many we're getting back from all the science processes that are going on, and these are a lot of these are being um, recycled up here. They're being reformatted by all these computers and then turned back into new good data cards and some broken data cards. We also ran into a problem where the uh, the broken data cards were absolutely jam packed all, all the way along here, and we had a serious problem with with those. And that was again related to the scrap. So because they were we we're trying to trying to reprocess them into into scrap, but this belt was fed out onto in, again into one of these splitters over here. And that was causing a massive jam because there just wasn't enough room with all the rest of the scrap that was coming in at the time. 
And that is another, and so that has been given its own private belt that goes down again into the storehouse. And that allows this to run as fast as it wants. Now there is, okay, there is possibly a slight risk of this storehouse filling up if we if we had solid belts coming in from, if all five of the belts coming in were absolutely solid. But I think that's pretty unlikely to happen. Um, the main problem over here is that there's quite a lot of other stuff that comes through the belts here as well, because these are still the unsorted miscellaneous junk belts coming from the rest of the factory. And so have, trying to fit everything onto those at that point was causing massive uh, was causing massive t tailbacks and jams and and everything everything was failing. But after a significant amount of work on this area, re pulling up a load of a load of um, a load of belts and then replacing them, and, and, and we've we've now got the system working nicely, and things seem to be going quite well. I would say that the only problem with this system as it now is is that we're using a storehouse as a balancer, and it might maybe we should come in and put in a, a limit on it like that because then the uh, the game won't have to check quite as many slots whenever it puts things in and takes them out, and hopefully that will make the thing. Make make it run a little bit more fast, quickly and more smoothly. I think it's not a serious problem given the number of other similar sort of systems we have around. This one is fairly minor and I think it's quite worth having this one working as well as possible given it's so so important for keeping everything in space up and working. Speaking of recycling and byproducts and other sort of junk stuff that we don't really want, one of the issues we, uh, we are, uh, uh, ran into in the last stream was that out on Big Red, the Vita Melange processing produces quite a lot of wood. I believe it's, it's this stage here where we're turning the, the Vita Melange ore, for want of a better word, into the uh, Vita Melange nuggets. That produces stone and, and wood. And we don't really have a use for wood at the moment. So at the moment it's just getting dumped out onto this belt down here where it gets brought over here. And we've got all these machines here. Peeling, so the wood is being peeled out and is, and is being turned into processed fuel in not enormous quantities but fairly significant quantities. That's all then being passed up here and being and then Mark doesn't want it out on Big Red So it's all just getting chucked into the uh, into the train to go up to the spaceship and then be taken away over to to Norvis And there's quite a lot of it if we look at these warehouses up here There's a grand total of six so that doesn't go to prove my point But trust me there is a lot of it being produced and um, at the moment in the moment Okay, only six has come up here But there is there really is a lot of it and that gets unloaded in Norbit It goes into the air uh, into the system here and it'll get passed through and over into the into the recycling system over here As you know, okay, there's 600 in this warehouse, which again is less than I was expecting, but still, it's a it's a it's a, it's a fairly significant quantity, and you can you can imagine that that will start to add up over time, and a little bit of it being fed over into the train over there. And so, as you may be able to imagine, that all then finds its way down onto Norvis and get comes through the uh, the, the recycling and processing system until it ends up over here in the core mining and core processing area, uh, where it gets un brought over by these trains, unloaded into the uh, in into the station here, and then gets uh, passed through and sorted with all the rest of the uh, the goodies that are coming down from space. And so, as you can see, we're taking away all the all the ores and the useful stuff away to be processed wherever. And down here, we yes, we're taking away wood, we're taking away the processed fuel, and that goes down this belt over here, goes into where it goes into a warehouse here, and I'm not quite sure exactly how this oh and there's belts that take it away. So the idea is that we want we want to have a supply of processed fuel available because we use that for all of our trains to keep them all running. The problem is that we have rather more of it now than we know what to do with. And so Tristan has started just chucking it into warehouses down here, and this is this is a bit ridiculous, but as you can see we've got uh, thirty we've got 40,000, basically we've got 40,000 in each each of these warehouses and they're just gradually being filled up as we get more and more and more that we just need to get rid of. We need to put somewhere because otherwise it fills up all of the, the rest of the system and causes jams and everything clogs up and it, it's generally bad. So yeah, we have an enormous quantity of processed fuel and much as I hate voiding things, I think we might need to start just destroying it because I, I, I don't know what to do with it. Yeah, sure, we can burn some of it to keep the trains running. That's a, a, a use for at least a little bit of it, but there's not really anything else we can use it for. We don't need to burn it to make power because we have solar everywhere that's being and being then provided by uh, uh, down down the space elevators. We've we just don't have any other need for burning things. So we've got all of this processed fuel building up that we just don't really know what to do with. And I think it is going to probably, sadly, I think it is probably going to be time to start voiding it because what else can we do with it? We don't even, you don't even need it to make an aquium. So yeah, these these buffers, they'll be they'll be a, 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 a short, a reasonable term solution. It's going to take quite a long time to fill all these warehouses up, but it's definitely not a permanent solution. We are going, we are eventually going to see it rear its ugly head again at some point in the future, I suspect, especially once we start using the huge amounts of vitamin that I think we're going to need for the Naquium processing. So, yeah, it, it, maybe we'll just nuke it every so often. We should, it'll make a pretty fire at least. We shall see.
For the last couple of weeks, I've been messing around with this blue circuit production facility over here because we want to decommission it. However, there is literally th tens of thousands of pieces of resource in the uh, in the system here that I don't just want to dump into the into the robo network. I mean, for example, the glass. There's 20,000, 20 something thousand glass there. There's 10,000 plastic, and then there's all this stuff on the belts up here. So I brought in an extra train with some stone bricks on it to, to pass through to get that running a little bit more. I brought through some extra silicon to get to get the uh, this stage running a little bit more, and it, it, it worked. We made a few more blue circuits, so we then had a train take them away. But I think what we're going to do at this point is um, is just feed everything back into the warehouses down here, um, probably by cutting off the belts at some point. We're not going to turn all the belts around because that way lies madness. That's just going to be difficult. Uh, but what we will do is probably bring run all these belts here back down this way and then filter them out, dump, dump it all into the appropriate stations and then we can run a train in, pick up all of the stuff from whatever station, go off and dump it probably into the bus station just to get rid of it and, and it's somewhere to put it and then come out and get get more and repeat and repeat and repeat until we've managed to get rid of all the resources from here. Once this place is basically empty then we can bring the bots in and start pulling up all the buildings and things. I don't feel too bad about that but I do, I do want to try and avoid dumping too much resource into the in, into the logistics system because I don't think it's really going to be able to deal with it very neatly. Out on Njord, Tristan says he's improved core processing. Um, I'm not sure exactly how he's improved it. It seems to have tier three modules in there already, and it's and it's and it's slow beacon, it's small beacon, so. Yeah, that seems to be running. Um, it has, however, it clearly has been improved to a certain extent, though, because it's now running faster than the trains are capable of bringing the resources in. So I don't know if that's a good sign or not, but it's clearly running fast enough now. And he's also improved the uh, chemical plants making the anion exchange beads, these blue things along here, um, by upgrading them to advanced chemical plants, which means more productivity modules, uh, all tier sixes as well. So he's going to be getting huge amounts of the uh, of the beads out there, and they run ridiculously quickly. He did say in hindsight he should have used loaders to get them to exit to bring them out of the other uh, building but never mind the inserters are capable of keeping up it's just but because each one is going onto a single belt and is quite capable of filling that belt a loader would probably have been an easier way to do it but this means he's now got enough of the anion exchange beads coming in down here presumably to keep all of this running so if we look at the the belts here yeah these are all running flat out these are seem to, these seem to be running flat out that looks like we now have the system processing as fast as it can, given the amount of input we're giving it. And if we've got, and we've got quite a lot of tier six modules on the way through here. Um, these aren't; these are tier threes, but uh, it's quite a lot of tier six modules. <clears throat> and so that's hopefully uh, sorted, uh, significantly improved the uh, the holmium supply when we've got a decent amount of that coming through. We'll go over and have a look at the graph in a, in a moment or two and see, see how things are going there. Similarly, out on Kothar, Tristan's done, in, in, in Mike's absence, Tristan's done a couple of little tweaks in here. So he's put in more of the, um, more pulverizers across here in order to uh, deal with the uh, iridium core chunks that are coming in. However, I notice that we now seem to have overloaded on core chunks because presumably something down here is jammed up because we've got too much water. Okay, so there is a lot of water coming out of here and it's apparently not being sufficient, not, not being dealt with. Uh, does it go anywhere? The water does then get taken away along this pipe up here to be um, to be passed around. Oh, no, maybe it doesn't. No, it doesn't. There's a pump in the wrong direction. If we turn that one round, I don't know. There, there are problems with the water over here anyway. we need It needs to be set up to drain it properly out of the core processing so we don't get this backlog, so that we don't get this backlog, so that we can actually pass a bit more ir iridium through. And the iridium seems to have ground a bit to a halt because not only is the core processing not running, as I, as I said, we've also not bringing enough of the uh, of the crushed ore in over here. Now, there is still a little bit running through the uh, machines up here, and so we do still have a stream coming out at the top, but that's going to end fairly soon as well. Tristan says he's also put in the additional core mine on uh, on Kothar, the one he was, the one he put, he'd sort of spec'd out some of the, uh, put out all of the rails and so forth for last time, but didn't actually get the core mine in place. Uh, now he has placed that core mine, so there's I, I don't know where it is, but so presumably there's now a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, core, a few more core chunks being brought in and over to here. Um, but because we're not actually processing them, that doesn't really help. That said, that said, it's obviously failed fairly recently because this warehouse is only half full. So if Mike moves reasonably quickly at the beginning of the next stream, he might be able to get everything up and running again um, before he actually wastes any core chunks, which would be quite good. I said I'd have a quick look at the supply graph before I finished, so here it is. We are currently apparently a little bit short of lithium, but not into crisis levels. We are very short of blue circuits, which is interesting. I shall um, have to have a quick look into that, see what's going on there. We're a bit short of the utility science packs, but then we, we, we've had a look at that. We've seen that the f fixes have been made there, so that's probably going to be okay. The Interestingly, it looks like the, the astro science has now caught up. We've got enough of that to keep the graph happy, but we've run out of tier three um, energy science, so those are, uh, th th those are in very, very short supply. We're still very very short of the superior sciences. I can't remember if we're making those or not, or whether that's just a sort of a 
for uh, planning for planning ahead. We'll have to check into that. Very, very short of matter science. That's a concern. I thought that was working quite well. Uh, and we're also very, very short of both holmium and iridium. So those are going to need even more, even more expansion. Um, there's also absolutely no naquium, as you can see by the fact there's not even a graph panel for it here. Um, but, you know, I've only just got started on that one. So I, um, I don't think that's entirely my fault. <laughs> We have done a little bit of research in the last uh, st uh, stream. Uh, so as I said, Tristan's been doing a lot of the deep space zone discovery. That's why we ripped through quite so many of those astro science packs. Uh, and that's meant he's done 41 to 46. And that may well mean that we've now found all of the asteroid fields out here. I feel like there's an awful lot of them. I th this feels like more than there were in my 0.5 game. So mm, I don't know whether that's because I didn't do enough deep space zone discovery or whether it's because there's, there's more of them in 0.6 or whether it's just that I'm misremembering. But either way, we seem to have um, a lot of these now. That's going to be very, very useful in the future and you'll see why then I won't spoil it to just yet we have got spaceship integrity 7 now as well so that means again we can build larger and larger ships uh, since the last ship that I built I was um, making making it exactly the same size as the existing ones that's not so useful however it's going to be, it's probably going to be very very useful in the future when we want to get onto even even bigger ships for other stuff um, and then we can actually start doing factory space researches as well. And that goes from giving you a 100 uh, stress limit per research to giving you an extra 500 per integrity research. So that means you can get, get, make your ships much, much bigger, much, much more quickly, uh, which is nice. But it does require deep space science. We have picked up deep space catalog one. That's very nice because I'm going to, once I've finally got the Naquium flowing, I'm going to need this to be available so that I can start making all of the, uh, all, all of the um, data cards that go into actually making the, uh, the deep space catalogs. That's going to be quite a big, uh, big job. I suspect, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Oh, um, there's also another type of void probe that's going to need to be launched. That's going to be um, interesting because at the moment we have our ships that are going out to do the probing all being launched from here, whereas the ship that's going to be going out to uh, take stuff to deep space is going from over here, will be going from over here somewhere, and those data cards are going to be required over here. So I'm not sure how, I'm not sure exactly how I want to do this. One possibility is to have have another one of these ships which will fly all the way out to a deep space asteroid field and then do the uh, do the launches from there all by itself uh, and have it as a sort of a, another self-contained ship that goes from here and does its does its own thing. That would certainly be possible. Another possibility is to somehow get the probes and probe rockets from here over to here in order to load them into this ship and then get the um, get the data cards that are produced from here all the way over to here uh, in order to do the science. That's possible, but I think that's going to be a lot worse. Uh, the other possibility is to launch the ship from over here, but that would require making more probes and more um, probe rockets somewhere else. So I think, I think I'm probably going to put in a third spaceship here that will load them out onto a train, and they can then be taken by train from here. I think that's probably the most sensible way to do it. It does mean there'll be two ships that go between um, Norbit and Deep Space, but I don't think that's a serious problem. And finally, we've done energy weapon damage 10 and 11, which means all of our lasers will do a bit more damage, our beam weapons will do more damage, generally all those sorts of things are a bit more powerful and a bit more effective than they were before. Um, we're not doing a great deal of combat anymore, to be honest, but I suspect that but, but at some point in the future we are going to need to start looking into pyramids. And so I think we'll be very, very glad of having all of these damage output um, upgrades available at that point. And so that is everything. Thank you for as ever. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't, we will be back um, on Thursday to carry on with all of this, all of this uh, difficult Naquium stuff and whatever ever, ever everyone else is doing. I shall be back on Tuesday playing some more Satisfactory, and of course I'll be back next weekend with the normal videos. So there's plenty, always plenty going on on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of it. And I'll see you then. Bye bye.